Welcome to another episode of Rock Out With Your Doc Out. I'm Marcia Prince, co-founder of The Plant Chicks, where we like to have a fun and informative conversation with a medical doctor. Today's doctor is Dr. Justina Sanders. She is one amazing human being. Jackie and I had the privilege of actually watching one of her speeches in person, and we were just blown away by all the nuggets and how she put science just so simple. So Jackie and I were like, we have to have her on a live. So we asked her, she said yes. And so here we are. But before I bring her on, I see that she's joined us. I'm gonna read her amazing bio, okay? So check this out. Dr. Justina Sanders, MD, is a California medical-based doctor, CEO, and founder of Prescription Lifestyle. She completed her medical training at, I think I'm saying this right, Poznan, I don't know if it's Poznan or Poznan University of Medical Sciences, and has a Bachelor of Science of Kinesiology from McMaster's Universi- University, it's a tongue twister, in Kinesiology. Dr. Sanders specializes in lifestyle transformations and is a certified plant-based nutritionist. She is also a keynote speaker and public health researcher. Her sincere hope is that through her work, she'll inspire and empower people to take autonomy of their own health and ultimately aid in the transformation of medicine. You guys, watching her speech in person, it was just mind blowing. She had so much nuggets. We were like, we have to bring her on and we are going to share her top five tips on living a whole food plant-based lifestyle. So show her some love today because this is her first live. I'm so excited that she's live with the plant chicks. So here we go. We're going to call her in, go live. And so just give it a second, but show her some love, give her some hearts, ask some questions. Please join the conversation. We're here to have fun. And hello. Hi. Hello, beautiful. Thank you for taking Hi, time today. Hi, Thank you yes, so much for you. having me. You are so welcome. Can is you hear me volume, okay? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Is my volume okay? Because this is my first time, so I just want to make sure this is this is good. Okay, can you turn up your volume just a little bit? Yeah. Make it on the, on the highest? No. Okay, highest. <laughs> this is the highest. Is this Perfect. okay? Yep. Perfect. I can scream too, so <laughs> if no, it's no, no, you're good. You're good. So I was just reading your amazing bio and telling everybody we met you at the California Veg Fest and you had so many nuggets in your speech. I'm like, we have to bring you on. You are so sweet, Marzia. I really appreciate it. And we really connected the three of us, the plant chicks and me. Um, It was such a great energy. And uh, yeah, I'm so glad that we're doing this finally together, something. No, I'm so excited. You know what made you so unique? You're so passionate. And you have a lot of energy. Sometimes when Jackie and I, we do certifications, we go to medical conferences. Sometimes doctors can be a little boring. I hate to say it, but it's true. And, you know, when you're up there on stage, sometimes you're like, you want to learn the science of what's behind it. It could be like a snooze fest. And you were just so full of passion, so excited. I was like, I love her. (laughs) Oh, you're so sweet. I think it's because I actually practice what I preach. I eat the plants. And, you know, you have a lot of energy. So anybody who does that, I can guarantee their energy levels will go up for sure. So maybe that has something to do with it. That I agree. You know what? I'm looking at you. You're so beautiful. And you have this glowy skin and you have this green behind you. <laughs> it's like I'm such a beautiful setting. <laughs> I have a little bit of an obsession with plants. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so we are going to talk to some yeah. fun conversation. Your top five tips on a plant-based lifestyle. Let's start with number five. Yeah. What should we know? First and foremost, so I just want to say this is like my favorite topic in the whole world. And um, yeah, it is, of course. Shocker, I know. Um, but yeah, in the whole scheme of things, it's not just the plants, but the plants are essential. So when I talk about using a lifestyle as medicine, it encompasses the mind, body, social support, environmental impacts, but at the very core, at the foundation, is whole food plant-based nutrition. And every single thing that I'm going to reference today and anything that I talk about, it is completely found in scientific literature if you dive deep like I did, you know, seven years or eight years after graduating from medical school, learning all of these different things, going to these medical conferences, learning from various experts and whatnot, 
you know, this is found in the evidence in the scientific literature, the double blind, randomized controlled studies, peer reviewed. So if you know how to read the studies and you know how to dive into the research, you will definitely find this information there. So if you're uh, someone like me who's really, you know, feels like this is something that, you know, you really want to dive deep in into this knowledge and information and, and attain it for yourself, then I highly encourage. So I just wanted to say that before we begin. But yes, top five. So number one. Uh, so the leading cause of death in America and Canada is heart disease. And the reason why I bring this one up is because it's not only completely preventable, but almost 1,700 people die every single day from this preventable disease. Mm -hmm. It is so infuriating to know that we have a tool in our toolbox that we can share with people, that you share with people, but yet medical doctors don't really know that it's even there. And it's, it's so frustrating because we did not learn nutrition in medical school. As you know, as you've heard, so many you know, experts, plant-based experts talk about how frustrating that is. We learn biochemistry. We learn about you know, synthesizing different vitamins. But really, on the whole, we don't know anything about recommending what's the optimum diet uh, for a human being. And hmm. in the scientific literature, you can find that the only diet, I call it diet, but really it's a lifestyle because it's a lifelong journey, as you know, is the only thing that you could do is adopt a whole food plant-based lifestyle or diet. That's it. And what's phenomenal is it actually shows to reverse disease by getting rid of your plaque by not even having plaques form in the first place or preventing from plaque formation. There's various different processes, one of which is the scientists found that in meat eaters versus non-meat eaters, there's an atherogenic chemical called TMAO. And in meat eaters, they found that the gut microbes, the trillions of bacteria in the gut, uh, they actually produce this chemical, which can cause atherosclerosis. And this is not found in plant eaters. How crazy, right? That is interesting. Yes. I always learn something new with you. And you, what I like about what Jackie and I were saying, because a lot of our audience is women, and we bring some science information, they just are really confused. And your, your presentation had so much science in there, but you explained it so simple that anybody can understand, like a five-year-old five -year can understand. So right? I'm like, I'm, I'm for me, it's like, <laughs> thank you. Well, for me, it's like this. If you, if you cannot explain it to someone in such general basic mm -hmm. terms for them to be able to adopt it, I mean, that's why the information's there. And to me, really, that's why we're physicians. We are supposed to be teachers and we're supposed to teach people how to adopt and live the healthiest lives that we can. We're not just supposed to push pills and pat someone on the back. Thank you for coming in for your annual mm -hmm. exam. It's beyond that. So, um, yeah, I'm so glad that there's people that get it and that I can simplify it in a way that it is usable information. So I'm happy that I can do that for you guys. Um, also, nitric oxide. So why I always recommend leafy greens. Nitric oxide, it makes your blood vessels actually expand. So when you crunch on leafy greens every single day, uh, that actually creates an enzyme in there which through a whole pathway, ends up increasing the nitric oxide in the blood vessels so they expand, decreasing your risk of high blood pressure and allowing the blood flow uh, to, to flow. Basically, the viscosity of the blood is better and it, the blood flows much better. So that's another reason why um, heart disease can be reduced using plants. Another thing is inflammation. Mm. So chronic diseases are based off of inflammation. They stem from this. I said this in my speaking engagement. It was a signature talk that I, uh, I believe that you you heard me talk um, at the Veg Fest. And this is like my passion. I swear, if people just understood this one little nugget of information that inflammation at the baseline causes all, all chronic diseases. So it doesn't matter if it's something from rheumatoid arthritis to heart disease to diabetes to inflammatory bowel disease, anything across the spectrum of diseases that are chronic diseases stem from inflammation. It's so important to, to know this because anything that you do in your lifestyle 
and now we're talking about dietary wise that causes inflammation can ultimately lead to the development of these diseases in the future. And depending on other factors in your lifestyle, you can either accelerate that process much faster or slow it down. Right. So, and inflammation is subtle, right? It's just a subtle, it can happen like through food or environment or... Exactly. Yeah. And so what happens is we release these cytokines, these inflammatory mediators in our blood. So things like C-reactive protein, these are mm -hmm. all measurable too. Um, insulin like growth factor one or inter interleukin six, these are all released. And, you know, there's so much research that shows that even like eating one bite of meat, when you measure someone's blood right after, you will see these mediators released. Just one wow. bite. Yeah. So if you're doing it cumulatively over and over mm. and over and things such as other stressors in your life, cortisol, that can cause inflammation. So being stressed out, not having a mindfulness based practice, things like that, all of this can lead to something like heart disease and then uh, saturated fat, cholesterol. Those are key in animal fats. We see a lot of this in, in dairy products and in, in meat. And so the best way to reduce saturated fat and cholesterol, don't have it at all, So, <laughs> right? So exactly. So um, we don't want the bad LDL cholesterol to go up. So, so that would be heart disease. But in terms of cancer, this is another disease that, you know, people ask me all the time, well, what's the cure? Like if you think that, you know, you're also knowing about lifestyle, like what is the cure? And I, there's no one stop shop for, you know, cancer, because there's so many different kinds, they affect so many different tissues. Uh, but at the baseline, again, they stem from a level of inflammation, period. Now, up to 5% and only 5% or less of all chronic diseases can be attributed to your genes solely to your genes. But around 95% or more are lifestyle factors that can either create disease or can prevent you from the development of disease. Okay, stop. That's yeah. huge. Is everybody listening out there? 95%? That means you guys have control, not your genes. You do. Exactly. That's amazing. Yeah. So a lot of people think, no, no, you know, I'm just going to do what I want to do and live the way I'm going to live because I'm going to develop this anyway. Or they say, oh, it's not in my cards. My grandma lived to be 100 or 95 or something like that. I'm not going to get it. Well, Number one, first and foremost, unfortunately, our environment is different than 50 years ago than 100 years ago. So we're playing in a different field right now. So we have to up the game when it comes to lifestyle modification, first and foremost. And I like that. Up the game. Up the game, right? Yeah. I mean, it's true. So, yeah, you cannot use that card anymore that someone lived to be certain age or someone died at a certain age. And therefore, you're just going to be frivolous and just do whatever you want in your lifestyle. Drink alcohol, smoke, or just even isolate yourself. I mean, just social isolation causes inflammation, you know. So that in and of itself you need to consider. Um but yeah, so when it comes to cancer, other things such as all of these plants, what I love and what's really exciting is they have all of these chemicals that help to reduce oxidative stress, free radicals, uh, things such as your bioactive amines. And nobody really talks about this. I don't know why in a plant-based world. This is why I always recommend the most nutrient-dense plants. So get in your sprouts, get in like your green tea, which I'm drinking right here. I love it. <laughs> You know, like try to get that kind of stuff in to uh, basically maximize your nutritional um, toolbox, if you will. You want to just get as many nutrients and vitamins in um, through all of these different things to try to prevent you from the development of cancer and all different cancers. Um, now, I could keep going on, but we're still on point number five. Should we keep going or? Yeah. No, I know. I think that's no, I think it's great. Still to elaborate on it a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So uh, for cancer, what causes cancer? Let's talk about fish. So mm -hmm. when people think, okay, you know, fish is healthy because the omega threes. Well, yes, the fish have omega threes, but where do the fish get the omega threes from? Oh, they eat it from the algae. I always say mm -hmm. go to the source, never eat fish. Why? 
okay, there's if, if the fish in and of itself has problems, but also the supplementation of problems. In terms of the supplementation, when people are like, well, I don't eat fish, but I'll just have my fish oil because of the omega threes. Well, you got to consider adulteration and things like that. Um, also, we don't even know. Yeah, is it really? because the FDA doesn't really regulate the supplement industry at all, right. we really don't know what we're getting in supplements these days. And in addition, our oceans, they are so polluted. And if you consider the amount of pollutants, there's like 80,000 or so chemicals in our environment right now. And I believe it's something around 65,000 of those have what they call have been grandfathered in. What that means is they have no regulation. They have no testing. We're basically these little people walking around this big, huge experiment because we've never, we don't have the science to say like, what one chemical with two other chemicals, how that exposure in our organs, in our organisms, in our systems, how that's going to react and how we're going to react to it on a cellular level, on a metabolic level. We have no clue. So we're in this huge experiment, which frustrates me because it's like, <laughs> who, who approved this in the first place? And why are we not doing something about it right now? to abolish this you know we should have rigorous testing done on all of these things so dioxins endocrine disruptors pcbs petrochemicals heavy metals you name it on and on and on and on cancer risk you know dysregulation of our own hormones leading to cancer risk again inflammation on and on and on it's this chain reaction so the chemicals. I say if, uh, if for any reason at all, avoid fish for the fact that there's so many chemicals. And in fact, people are like, oh, well, maybe it's so easy for you because maybe you never liked fish. Actually, I loved fish. <laughs> <laughs> I used to eat sushi five times mm -hmm. a week. And um, yeah, it was the last thing for me to get off of, get off of. But to with open hands, give up because I realized that my health was way more important than my craving for fish. And I could find substitutes for that, you know, along the way. And it, it did the, it did the trick for me. It wasn't so much the fish. It was the fishy taste of it. So like the seaweed, the algae, and you know, we aren't getting enough of that. Just seaweed in that iodine because now this huge craze with salt and everybody's doing, you know, Himalayan salt mm -hmm. or Celtic gray sea salt. Okay, those are better forms than the refined salt, but those don't contain iodine. And so a lot of people don't know this and they'll keep eating that. And it's really bad for your health. That's a whole other topic. Um, oh my gosh, I'm learning so much, so many new things. <laughs> I'm like, but, uh, no Himalayan sea salt, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's fine in, in moderation, but I actually don't like that saying. I say moderation does kill because I say yeah. when people are like, oh, I, moderation, I right? Yeah. Do I always say, do you want a moderate or a full on heart, heart attack? You know, like, right. what would you want? Because when I saw patients that died in the emergency room and before my eyes and it was it's some of the saddest times, you know, looking back, you know, of something that's so preventable and and it's like, oh, my God, had I seen them, you know, a day before, maybe that could have prevented them from being where they are right now, where they're laying on a gurney in a in a back room of the emergency room, getting ready to be zipped up and taken taken mm. down to the cooler. It's it's so sad um, and it breaks my heart. That's why I got into medicine in the first place is because. I wanted to prevent and be the solution and um, offer people the best that I could in terms of care to do no harm, the information. And it's crazy. It's like, Marcia, you know more information about preventing disease than I would say 90% of the doctors out there because this is true healing. Like plants mm -hmm. heal and people don't really, I feel like they're starting to get it. Mm -hmm. But I feel very like, small percentage. Yes. And I feel like there's so many other people that cherry pick information. And, um, and trust me, I would not be here living this lifestyle if I wasn't convinced. And it takes me so long to be convinced, like truly convinced. 
Um, and it works. And I see that it works. When I was doing, per, you know, personal lifestyle transformations on people and for people, and you see them slowly tapering off medication, it's just like, wow. You see true medicine and true healing and people are thriving. And you know this very well from the people that you help on a one-on-one -on -one basis and group basis all the time. Right. It's all about being proactive. We tell people, be proactive with your health. I mean, it's day in and day out. It's not like you can eat a salad on Tuesday. It's going to cover you the next Tuesday. It doesn't right? work like that. It only does it in the moment. You know, another thing I noticed about you too, like, or any of the plant-based doctors that we have on our show we, we, you guys are always, you look good. You guys don't look haggard. A lot of the other doctors we see look tired and haggard. And I just can't even explain it. You, you guys have a glow. You look good. You don't have dark under eye circles and, you know, look like you haven't slept in years. You guys actually look like, I mean, it's besides your passion showing through, you guys yeah, actually yeah. look physically healthy. That I'm like, wow, you guys have a glow. Your skin looks good. And, and it's crazy. I went to the, um, what is it called? Um, the Plantrition Project last year with Jackie. And we were looking around the room and there was hundreds of plant-based doctors. And I said, wow, nobody is overweight here. Nobody. And there was over a thousand, there's thousands of doctors in there, right? Yeah, there's, there's no hundreds thousands. of doctors, but thousands of people, but hundreds of doctors. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, I don't know if they've had a thousand doctors, but all the doctors looked good and nobody was overweight. So yeah, it definitely shows when you're practicing what you preach. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I, 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 can't agree more you know i've gone to that conference so many times um in previous years I've, I've gone probably four times or so and yeah same thing but it's so funny the first time i went there was only like 300 of us total three or four hundred of us total and it's like crazy how every year they keep growing and growing and it's like they sell out it's like once the I mean, physicians are finding out about this, and I will tell you, give it another five to ten years, and this is going to be standard. Um, maybe not standard of care, but standard knowledge, and they're going to now try to implement it into the system. And I pray that they implement it into the hospital systems, and they started doing it, but on it, like... Basically, internationally, I would just love to see it everywhere. Every hospital try to uh, at least even offer up plant-based options for patients. None of that disease-promoting food. I mean, you're going to the hospital to get well, not get more <laughs> sick. You know, I mean, yeah. All right. No, I think yeah. it will. With doctors like you that keep continuing with the mission and keep spreading the words, you guys are making a difference right now, the ripple effect in your world. You guys are pioneers of it. Like, we had the ones from back in the day, the Ornish and, you know, um, uh, yes, Jim Colin Campbell. Ornish. You guys are <laughs> yeah, we have Ornish and T. Colin Campbell, but you guys are carrying the torch and still continue it. Plus, with more knowledge and more research and science yeah. and findings of what's going on today, so I was like, there can be like a petri, to, the petri dish for like guinea yeah. pigs in here. And you guys are seeing this on a regular basis because you're treating these people. So it's, it's actually quite fascinating. I was just like, so your number five is to prevent it against uh, heart disease and cancer. So yeah. That is super important. Yeah. And other things like casein and uh, also is cancer promoting um, things like that. You know, I could go on, but let's move <laughs> on to the next topic. But just actually just to end that topic, 70 to 80 percent, again, uh, of diseases are preventable using lifestyle as medicine around 40 or 60 percent if just just if you use whole food plant-based nutrition of chronic diseases are preventable so uh yeah and 95 percent are all lifestyle based so can we just take that again into consideration such an important point so okay number four yes okay yes Number four, Long longevity. I mean, who doesn't want to live a long life, right? I don't know. I actually don't. I, I would rather live a long and healthy life. So a health span. <clears throat> um, so the longest living cultures in the world, we, we know this. A lot of your followers know the blue zones. Uh, this is what I, this is one of my favorite topics because these are people that live a predominantly whole food plant-based lifestyle. Now, sure, they, you know, you'll have those critics that will be like, well, listen, <laughs> <clears throat> they eat fish, they eat fish like mm, maybe once a month. Okay. You know, depending. So the blue zones, let's talk about it. So Nicoya or Nicoya, however you pronounce it. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but in Costa Rica and Okinawa, Japan, Sardinia, Italy, Loma Linda in California, 
And then we have Ikaria in Greece. And so these are longest living in that they have the most centenarians, 100 plus year olds in the world. Amazing. Um, yeah, so they have a lot of lessons to teach us. And one of which is to eat plants, eat as many plants as you can. And each one has different things. So I believe in Greece, they eat a lot of, you know, different types of herbs. Um, so depending on which region, they eat different types of plants and legumes and things like that. Um, so first and foremost, I would like to say if you, and I've not really heard of other scientists talking about this or researchers talking about this, and I've not seen this in the blue zones, but since they live on islands, most of them live on islands. Loma Linda is not. Seventh Day Adventist, it's actually in California. But oh. they live on islands. It's very interesting, right? So yeah. I was thinking, I'm like, no, could it be that in addition to eating all of these plants, they are not subjected to as many chemicals and as many stressors and as many of the other environmental and lifestyle factors that we are. So um, if they eat one ounce of fish in an entire month, maybe we should not be eating any fish in an entire month. You know what I'm saying? Because we have to up our game because we're not living in the same environment that they are living in. So, um, so that's one of the things that, you know, I always like to encourage people to consider. And that's one thing about Western medicine and in science in general, we don't really, we don't really take consideration of things that are common sense and things that are, you know, anecdotes. And even though anecdotes, no, and there's reasons why we don't consider them as valid or um, true evidence, they are data points nonetheless. And I still think mm. and truly believe that, that if that minimum, if that minimum, sorry, they should be considered. They should be considered at least as observation or just to reflect on or, or whatnot. And that's what the longevity studies of these um, of these people in the longest living cultures in the world. That's what we're doing. We're observing their behaviors, their diet and lifestyle traits, and how they go about to live the longest than any other people in the entire world. So I always encourage people to look at that, not just to, oh, well, it's just an anecdote. So <laughs> it doesn't matter if they cured their cancer because of you know, 10 different protocols that are not surgery, radiation, chemotherapy. So Right, right. No, I think that's super fascinating. And think also, too, that when they're living on those islands, they didn't back then, they didn't have all these iPhones and, you know, all the stresses of today's modern society that we do with pressures and timelines. I feel like the stress that we have today, it's almost everything. Even as a woman, it's like you're expected to have a job, be a mother, you know, have your social life, take care of your kids. It's just like insane. Wait, wait, wait. And have your perfect Instagram, right? That's right. I mean, it's insane. <laughs> it's crazy. And it's, it's exhausting. You know what I mean? And it's just like you try to do the best you can. Of course, you're going to fail somewhere. You're going to fall short. And it's always about taking it back to our practice. Like you said, having a mindful yeah. practice every day. It doesn't just, it's not just about food. So I like about your whole philosophy. It's, it's a life thing. It's mind, body, soul, nutrition. It's, it, you embody everything. It's about the practice of every day. Right. And then also, you're being a researcher, it's studying the science behind it and what makes sense. Yeah. And a lot of people don't really consider like epigenetics, you know, that whole turning genes on or off depending on the environment. So again, we were bringing it back to like mindfulness. You know, you have a lot of cortisol that might turn a gene on or off depending on what it is. Like depending on any environmental stimuli you put into the matrix, it will literally affect the genes. They're like switches and they're constantly doing that throughout our body every single day. You know, it, it, scientists have found that we are actually, we are exposed to all these things and we do turn genes on for cancer all the time, but we have repair mechanisms in our body to go in and start fixing everything. But if we are constantly putting ourselves through stress, no social support, poor diet, so eating standard American diet or eating a lot of pro-inflammatory foods such as animal products, when we're doing that on and on and on and on, the chances of us turning those light switches or those switches on and the chances of us not being able to repair the genes or repair the damage that's happening in our cells, 
it, it's so great, so much greater than if we were to live that kind of optimal lifestyle. And I mean, nothing's a guarantee, but if the science is there, we have a, we have the role, um, the duty. I would say it was, it's a really a duty for us to spread this information to tell as many people and to at minimum for them to get curious, for them to get their own information. Because it is almost criminal not to share it. You know, it is something that is literally life saving and life changing. And if we don't share it with people, then why are we even here? What are we <laughs> doing? Right? So. No, I completely agree. That's why we have you on here. <laughs> we are sharing information. Okay, you guys heard it. Number four, she's a longevity. And um, make sure yeah. that it's not just food. It's it's about community. It's about watching what you put in your body. Uh, stress. So you guys, you heard her, heard it from her first. Up your game. <laughs> your game. Yeah. Up your game. Um, What's so number three? Give so us number, number three, three, I would say, and this is often not talked about, is medication. So. Um, decreasing in medication and the chance of actually reversing the disease. So. For instance, when you eat plant food and you avoid animal products, you're avoiding the risk of intramyocellular fat deposition. So what that means is you've decreased your risk of insulin resistance. So that's just an example of if you eat more like this and live a lifestyle such as the one we were just talking about, but whole food plant-based nutrition, when you adopt it, you can potentially get off your medication for insulin if you have diabetes. So, I mean, what a world, right? If we were to give this information, free information, and people would actually adopt it, and they would start tapering off their medications. I mean, remarkable, right? Now, I find that the most important thing that people often overlook and a lot of scientific bodies overlook this because the top 10 leading causes of death, depending on the source, doesn't have this in there, but some sources do. And it says that the third leading cause of death is actually due to medical error. And of the medical error, uh, medications is the number one cause. Wow. So if we consider that, and and I'm by no means anti-medications. I actually think there is a role for medications. I think that's where science and Western medicine, we thrive in. We really do know what we're doing, but we don't know what we're doing at the same time. We know how to, if we didn't have insulin, for instance, people would die of diabetes. End of story. I'm remarkable that people can still live, you know, not a health span and not a long life, but can live longer on insulin than if they were not to have that as an option. So there is a role for medications, but my goodness, if there is a role for no medications, wouldn't that be a wonderful healthcare system where all the dollars we allocate toward medications can now be put toward prevention so these drug companies they don't have to go you know bankrupt they can actually turn their business models around and they it could be whole prevention focus and still produce the medications because we still need them but not to maybe the same amount and and i think that kind of um optimistic thinking for the healthcare system is what we really do need because too many people are on way too many medications. Mm -hmm. You get from one medication that then re requires a second medication because you have some side effect from the first medication. Now the second medication has now a third, a second side effect that now you require a third medication. And you will get these patients in with 10 medications and what we call a drug cocktail. Um, and it is just mind boggling because as a doctor, and again, I'm going to bring back this whole point about chemicals. We don't have studies that tell us what three, four, five medications are doing on a whole body system. So then we're just playing with like, okay, here are your numbers and let's just tweak this number to make this blood number correct. And then this one, oh, it's too high, whether it's cholesterol or blood pressure, whatever it is, the HbA1c. So, okay, that's too high. This is too low. So let's tweak this medication. Wow. They don't know what they're doing. We weren't taught how these are interacting. So wouldn't it be safest to do no harm to a try to avoid those medications in the first place or at least minimize them and then 
integrate using plants, so that integrative kind of medicine um, philosophy, if you will, I think that is true medicine, is where you're actually looking at the patient on the whole, and you're treating them on a whole body system, not just sys symptom and system based. So, wow, that's patient. actually fascinating about layer, you know, each body obviously is different. And then you're layering these different medications. And we really don't know what happens if you cross three medications with your body type or genetics or lifestyle factors. I mean, there's so many things to consider. And a lot of people use it as a band-aid. Well, my doctor, which doctors are to be trusted, some of them, some of them not. But they're like, my doctor said this. It's, everything is like gold. But what about the doctors who don't eat right or don't live a healthy lifestyle? And they're just right? like, eh. Like back in the day, 1950s and 60s, doctors smoked and they promoted cigarettes. You know, obviously today it's completely different. So we know we know this about it. And now, you know, yeah. I feel like it's with the standard American diet and eating so much meat. We have a lot of doctors that don't practice with a patient that are super unhealthy. You know, I hate to say this, but like even sometimes when I go to a doctor, like I moved to Austin recently. So I feel like find all new doctors for my stuff. And I was like, I am so picky about my doctor. Like my, cause my doctor in, um, um, Dallas was a pescatarian. She wasn't, you know, she did plant-based here and there, but she cared about a healthy lifestyle. So I loved her and I had her for 15 years while I was in Dallas. Well, actually a little bit more, maybe like 18, but it's very important to me to have a doctor that understands me, but also practices what they preach. I just don't want anybody. If somebody is like super unhealthy, looks like I haven't slept in 20 years, that's an indicator. Why would I want that person to guide me on my health? Yeah. I just yeah. don't. Yeah, and that is so great that you are doing that and uh, you practice what you preach and then you tell people, like even just having a, this conversation, maybe, just maybe will inspire someone else to be like that and and demand answers and push their doctors to get the information because that's where change happens. It's at that one-on-one -on -one individual basis and we all have a role to play here. So being a curious patient, uh, an inquisitive patient who wants the best and who speaks the same language because you are like in the that. know, right? And you're very learned in this topic. So uh, you do need someone on your level who will give you the best advice that you need. So I always say, and when people ask me, they do ask me a lot, you know, well, what's the best doctor? You know, I would look for functional medicine but again, if you could find, now if you could find someone like this, functional medicine taught a little bit of integrative medicine and who's also whole food plant-based with a touch of lifestyle medicine, okay, that's not out there. So um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see, we're talking about maybe you, no. <laughs> so maybe just me, but I've spent so many years just studying this like full time. And so, but again, it is, it's really hard to find that. and. That's what I'm passionate about, Marcia, is like teaching doctors that we have a due diligence to learn about integrative medicine, functional medicine, whole food, plant-based nutrition, lifestyle medicine, or what I refer to using lifestyle as medicine. And that is the language that we all need to be speaking so that we are on the same page and we're talking about not just health, but true health, which stems from a personalized whole body underlying cause of disease kind of approach as opposed to again a symptom system non-plant-based yes. non-prevention approach so <laughs> no i agree and also a couple of years ago i learned about a site called plantbaseddoctors.org and and they also put in registered dietitians and health coaches so jackie and i you know as plant yes. chicks we registered our company on there and are you on there as well on i'm the not i but I could be, I just chose not to be, but I've actually personally recommended it to some people. And unfortunately, um, there have been some doctors who were not plant-based, but they decided to put themselves on there. Okay, so you can't even trust that either. You just have to do your due diligence and yes. really study and research. And, and at the okay. end of the day, if, if there's any take home point for your audience today and anybody who's listening is do that. Um, do your research. When you go to your doctor, ask the questions. Tell them what you expect of them. I mean, throw them off their rocker for a little bit, right? Um, but yeah, tell them, this is what I'm looking for as a doctor, someone who's knowledgeable in this, 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 
someone who can order this and this, someone who can do what I always say, comprehensive mineral and vitamin uh, nutrient type of analysis, which they don't do. Um, they don't do that. And it's so frustrating because you go through your whole life without maybe getting any of these tests, thinking that you might have everything in your diet that you need, but maybe you have low levels of inflammation that you might not know about and you might not be absorbing the nutrients the way that you should be so we have to be in the know but you have to be in the know of your body and the only person that can be the most in the know of your body is you so you have to go into your doctors you have to tell them exactly how you feel and if they're not willing to listen then you have to find someone who is and who's willing to go at it and like get you the best health that you can get in terms of recommending evidence-based information uh, to you. No, I agree. That's fascinating. We have actually a Plant Chick Tribe member here. Um, love you in LMTV. Actually, I know her face. So her name is Carmen. Carmen says, I'm very picky about doctors as well. It's so important to do so because I've learned the hard way and they do not always know about a lot of things. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you got to feel it, so you know, like you, yeah, I mean, like you said, only you can tell, like, if something's not feeling right, or, you know, whether your doctor, you're connecting with your doctor, because it's also about, you know, connection, like, yeah. if you don't connect with your doctor, and you're just there, just an appointment, I feel like that's weird, like, I, I was so connected with my regular doctor, my gynecologist, I mean, <laughs> my dentist, I'm not even kidding you, like, <laughs> I've had these people for so long, and I think what attracted me to them is, you know, from the very beginning, from years ago, is because we both were interested in nutrition. And I feel like nutrition just embodies so much of who we are on a day-to-day -day basis because we have to eat, you know? Yes. And I just feel like it's just so important to meet other people that we connect through, not just through food, but, you know, education of, of what we're putting in our body. So, awesome. I love that. Yeah, and just to add, because you were saying, like, how important it is to you for you to connect with your doctor. And that's so important because, you know, what is your doctor there for? I mean... A lot of people get that white coat syndrome or white coat effect, however you want to call it, where they'll go to their doctor and they feel intimidated. They feel mm -hmm. fear. And that's not true health and true medicine because you'll never be able to share with your doctor everything that's going on with you and your body if you cannot feel comfortable with that physician. And that's a problem because a lot of medicine takes place in the history taking and a proper very well educated physician will know exactly how to take the history the questions to ask and will really dive deep into that beyond the diagnostics but really connect everything it's almost like medical detectives but beyond that and you have to be able to connect with your patients so if you don't feel comfortable you're not going to give them all of the information that you would if for if you weren't comfortable and so therefore there's this there's this, these gaps that you might not be sharing with your doctor these invaluable pieces that had they known maybe they would have thought it would be something else or maybe it would save time and and not you know put you through all of these different tests maybe they know exactly what you need but again it comes down to finding the right fit for you and there's not a one type of doctor that's for everybody. So yeah, I definitely highly recommend you finding the one that you click with. So no, that's amazing. So you've given us three important. Yes, I would say points. Give us the next one. Yes. Um, so the next one microbiome. So we touched on this at the very, very beginning about the trillions of gut microbes. So in the last 10 or so years, this is before, uh, before I went to medical school, no, this is around the time I was in medical school. Uh, but yeah, they started they started bringing out research on the microbiome. So for anyone that doesn't know, which I'm sure your audience knows, but we have trillions of gut microbes lining our gut. And they're there for us for so many different reasons. They are actually there first and foremost to support our immune system. So 70% of our immune system is found in the gut, depending on the resource it's 70 or source. 70 to 80 percent but yeah if you consider that anything you do down there that affects them is affecting your immune system so all of these different supplements that you can take i mean you you hear about all these cleanses and this and that and that's great 
And as long as they're supporting those gut microbes, awesome. But there's so many things out there that are supplements and um, some kind of nutritional regimens and things that actually are detrimental to your gut microbes. And they are anti-inflammatory. How is that so? If the immune system and your gut microbes build the immune system and it's all in your gut and 70% is there, how is something like a supplement that says it's anti-inflammatory really anti-inflammatory? It's not. So uh, again, it's uh, what, what we consider is the dysbiosis that occurs. So we have all these different species. In fact, we have three pounds or so of gut microbes in our gut, which is a lot, actually, if you consider wow. it. Wow. I need no yeah. idea. I've never heard that amount. <laughs> three pounds, yeah. And um, I mean, there's trillions. There's different, like there's yeasts and viruses and, and bacteria. And what they do is they synthesize different vitamins, so like B vitamins or vitamin K2. And a lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to take a K2 supplement. Well, no, like, no, that doesn't really work. And I actually don't really know of any K2 supplements. But NATO or NATO, I don't know if that's yeah. how you pronounce it, fermented soybeans, they actually have vitamin K2. But how many fermented soybeans are you going to have, right? So wouldn't it be easier to help your microbiome thrive and allow it to grow naturally and to the point where it actually creates your own vitamin K2 for you? So these are, they have various different mechanisms, like vitamin K is for anticoagulation in your body, so preventing it from clumping up. And again, that whole plaque formation or blood clots and things like that. So it allows the viscosity of the blood to, to be better. Um, yeah, so the gut microbes. And a lot of people don't really realize that antibiotics that are found in animal products, antibiotics are there to kill bacteria. And antibiotics that we take from the doctor, let's say if we have a bacterial infection, because, right, we never take antibiotics if we have a viral <laughs> infection, frustrates me. We should not be taking antibiotics for viral infections. Please, let's stop this, like, madness. Uh, no, they don't work. They're only there to kill bacteria. So if you're eating animal products with all of these different antibiotics and things such as fish, like with endocrine disruptors, all of this in turn actually causes the microbiome uh, a lot of harm. So people don't really realize that if you consider an antibiotic kills bacteria, I would say, what do you think it's doing to your bacteria and your gut microbiome? Um, and people don't really think of it that way. But again, that simplicity is like one and one plus two. You know, that's what it's doing. And that's what we need to do is we need to simplify the information for people so that they can get it. And I always say, you know, like in my signature talk, I say, find your why. And once you get the knowledge and you simplify it, it's such an autom automatic trigger. It's like when you go in to get that fish or you go in to you know, eat a an animal product with antibiotics, automatically what happens in your brain is it goes, oh, wait, there's antibiotics in there. Oh, wait, that's my why. Wait. Wait, I can develop a disease. Wait, you know, my health span. Oh, okay. So if people just start thinking that way and create that automaticity, um, this becomes sustainable over time. So, yeah, so the microbiome and the gut health of the microbiome. And no, also, I think that's super important. That's super learns, important. A lot of people yeah. don't know what the gut microbiome is when you talk about it. So I'm glad you're really elaborating on it in detail because still a lot of people don't know. Even though we touch on it, I feel like every day we meet, like, what's the gut microbiome? Yeah. People keep saying that. Yeah. yeah. And another thing that, you know, I've not heard many people talk about at all, but I've kind of put one and one together with this is, you know, since we produce around 90% of our serotonin in the gut, well, it's a feel-good hormone. And so, you know, you see all of these people go on medications for um, suicide, psychosis, schizophrenia, all of these different, you know, uh, psychotics or um, um, psychoactive drugs, type of, type of psychoactive drugs. And we think, okay, is this it? Is this the only solution? Were they born this way? I always say, start with the gut. You know, Hippocrates said start with the gut when it comes to disease. When it comes to mental health, I really wish that 
you know, psychiatrist would start considering the gut first and would do a thorough analysis of the gut microbiome, the species, mm -hmm. how they're breaking everything down. Because I want to say, and it would make so much sense that if all of these hormones are produced in the gut, the majority of them, like serotonin, that there is a link and that we're missing that link. And so my hope for the future is that we look to the gut when it comes to me mental health disorders and um, find solutions there first and foremost, and then move from there to psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, all these other alternative modalities before we throw a medication on board from the get-go. Um, so I think that's extremely important. No, I, that's fascinating because I do say your gut is your second brain. So everything, you know, this is super important. What's in there? A lot of people don't realize it. I mean, some people think it's just up here and it's like, no, it's what is in your gut not just your brain. So yeah. thank you for touching on that. Yeah. I love the way you put it. You you have a, such a passionate way, but it's so simple for, you know, anybody to understand. Sometimes, like I said, we go to some of these, you know, medical talks. Sometimes the, the doctors can be, I would say, they're a little lackluster and kind of boring. And it, it could be like terminology that we're like, come to earth, like what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speak my language, my friend. No. Yeah, so that's why perfect. I like to have fun conversations with different doctors and bring them on here that are passionate about what they do because they can put it into words and language that everybody can understand. Yeah, for sure. So all right, point, prevention. Prevention. <laughs> you know, we do not talk about prevention. We're not taught prevention in medical school. We really, really aren't other than tell your patients to stop smoking and tell your patients to stop drinking, but then doctors themselves can't do that. So I'm not really sure why they're telling them that. Mm. But yeah, so prevention. So the best way that we can prevent from the development of chronic <laughs> disease is eating as many plants as possible. So I'll bring it back to those bioactive means, things like polyphenols and your bioflavonoids. We hear these, these little key uh, words like curcumin. Oh, I know curcumin, it's in turmeric. Well, these are such amazing chemicals. And what I really love about them, I didn't touch on this earlier, is the synergy. So when you take whole intact plant foods, they work together in like, I always say like an orchestra, you know, you every single piece works harmoniously with each other in a certain way that we don't really know how to yet decipher all of these different things that they do together. And that's what you do when you get whole intact plant foods. Why, you know, people say, oh, so it's vegan. It's veganism. You're just promoting veganism. Like, no, it's actually beyond veganism. It's, it's whole food plant-based, meaning you're using these whole intact plants and not just stripping everything out of them and using like the oil, which is actually not good for you. But if you use like the whole plant, so the actual avocado, not the avocado oil or the coconut, not the coconut oil. These are these chemicals that work together one on one. And again, there's about 800 or so of these bioactive amines that work in this way. They repair our DNA, they decrease our inflammation, reduce oxidative stress, they reduce free radicals, they, they do so many different, have so many different repair mechanisms that we don't even know every single thing they do yet but we know they're doing it and they have such a positive effect on the body. Another thing with plants for prevention is fiber. Fiber, fiber, fiber. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always say it's the best detox in the world. I know you've mentioned fiber to your people, your clans, um, that it truly is. I mean, around 3% or so of the US population gets enough fiber. That's extremely scary. So no wonder colon cancer rates are extremely high when fiber is one of the best things you could do to reduce your risk of colon cancer and all cancers really. Fiber helps to bind your stool, you know, excretes out uh, all of the toxins and all the heavy metals and it also reduces your LDL cholesterol. It is amazing and unfortunately, um, for those meat eaters, predominantly meat eaters out there, they don't really realize there's no fiber in meat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I'm going to go low carb. Low carb means low plants because all plants for that means that means no food food for your microbiome. I'm going to bring it back to the microbiome again, which they use as a number one source for their food source to make short chain fatty acids and things like that for us. 
Um, so on and on. And that's one of the best ways to prevent the development of chronic disease is whole food plant based for the even just solely for the fiber aspect of it. I would definitely say that's on my top, top of the list. So yeah, I love it. Prevention. You guys have heard it here first. Dr. Justina Sanders said up your game. <laughs> you have to be preventative and proactive to live a long, healthy lifestyle. It's not just about living a life is a healthy life. It's about the quality of your healthy life. You want to yes. live a long and healthy life. Okay, Justina Sanders, where can our people find you at? Yeah, so at Prescription Lifestyle. Um, so you've linked that everywhere, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> uh, so they can find me there. And I have some really exciting things coming up. I will just say because I'm slowly releasing little information, but I'm I'm launching a food line, a whole food plant based food line with my husband, who's also a physician. Wow! Uh, so yeah, it's exciting, and there's other things in store. But um, again, we're doing everything, and I'm doing everything, and I've been doing this for so long to not for myself, but for everybody because. Number one, we don't have the resources. We don't have, you know, the information, the education, and we need more of it. We need food. We need doctors. We need, we need a whole regime of plant-based <laughs> people to get this information out to help everybody to change a healthcare system, to transform lives, to prevent disease, to prevent people from getting ill, and and that's what we're here for. No, I think that's amazing. Okay, a couple of fun questions before we go. Yeah. What is your favorite? What is your favorite plant-based food? My favorite sushi. <laughs> plant-based sushi, a hundred percent nori with literally anything in it, and I love rice, a hundred percent. I can eat that every single day. I'm serious. So yeah, I would say seaweed, nori, rice, plants. Awesome. <laughs> I that for sure. Okay, on your whole food plant based line with your that you're doing the husband, Jackie goes, We need to have an affiliate link for your food line. <laughs> done, done and done. Jackie's sure. like ready to sell for you. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. Okay. Also, um, what kind of what kind of position is your husband? So he's internal medicine. He's a hospitalist. Okay. So he sees patients. You don't want to go visit him because you know he's in the hospital. <laughs> He's like at that stage where you just don't want to be. <laughs> You're like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, yeah. But he, you know, okay. it's so funny because early in this whole journey of me learning about this, he was extremely resistant. And when I told him I was get crazy enough to go down this route, he, my whole family, they were all like naysayers. They're like, what is wrong with you? No, like, what are you doing? And I said, I have to follow this. I don't know what it is, but I... Listen, I set out one mission in this whole medical journey, and it was to help people and to serve humanity. And I thought the way that I could do it most was through medicine. And, you know, finding this information out and knowing the impact that it has on an individual basis and the whole world, really, it to me, it was so mind blowing. I couldn't help but go down this route because it was never about me, it was always about others. So, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So I told the naysayers, the husband and everybody else, like, you know what? It's okay. Like, you don't accept this. Maybe one day you'll get it. And he got it. He got on board. I started pulling him to the conferences. And then he started saying this information is patients at the hospital. It's very difficult when people are on, like, 10 meds and they're there because it's, like, acute, you know, situations. But, you know, when before they leave, they're so appreciative that there is, a doctor there that can talk to them about lifestyle and nutrition and they're really actually surprised 10 times out of 10 you know so yeah so that was that <laughs> where do you practice that so I do per personal one-on-one -on -one lifestyle transformations and it's a client consultant type of basis so I will do Skype calls and I actually just relaunched uh, a few weeks ago so I'm definitely open to doing this with anybody, you could just contact me through prescriptionlifestyle.com, the contact form. Let me know if you're interested and we will work one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but I'm also going to be launching a program that's going to be more accessible to people with these little nuggets of information that are life-changing and transformative that, you know, 
it, it will be about a month or so of your life, but it's going to be a month for the rest of your life. And that's how I see it. So uh, yeah, I'm just working on a lot of different things. So I just want to make myself and information as accessible as I can. And that's why I'm so appreciative that you had me on here today because yay, Aww. plant chicks. Yeah, this means a lot. So any chance and opportunity that I get to share this information and really really magnify this information because together it's like you know we really we we do we magnify it to the world and and hopefully we will resonate some of this positivity and um inspiration for people to keep getting curious and keep changing there's actually going to be a google talk coming out where <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's going to be actually on Google Talks on YouTube, and I believe it's going to come out in a week. So I got notification last week that it'll be oh. actually next week or the following week. So yeah, so everyone gets to enjoy the signature talk if they would like. I love that. You have your hands in the cookie jar everywhere. <laughs> you have to. So many things. It's plant-based cookies, though. <laughs> it is plant-based cookies. <laughs> I should say you have your, your hand in the fruit basket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the the cookie jar. yeah. I love it. No, that's awesome. No, but thank you for thank taking you. the time. My gosh, thank you it. so much. Anytime. This was so much fun. And yeah, we'll do something like this again very soon, I'm sure. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, and we have Bye. a special way we like to close as Plant Chicks Tribe. Go like this. Oh, Dr. Oh, Justine yeah, Sanders. Just Everybody, please rock out with your brock out. Dr. Sanders. Or dock out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> rock out with your dock out. I love Thanks, it. Thanks, Marzia. Bye, guys.